Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Now in today's video we're back with a quick update about sound on the Wise CX0 to Thin Client. Now I've uh, shown this Wise CX0 a couple of times on the channel before and at the minute um, I've got it set up as a Windows 98 box for my five-year-old to have a, a bit of a bash about on, you know, a play about with. Hence why I'm in the living room and apologies that this is a little sort of harshly lit. This is not where I normally film, so I've just had to kind of make the best of it. Now the actual CX-0, it's attached to the back of this screen, so uh, I'll show you that in a minute. It's just sort of tucked down there. And I think these make fantastic little boxes for running old operating systems on, especially the Windows 9X series of OS. Uh, you know, the, the cheap, the, the rugged, the silent, you know, there's no moving parts inside, the low power. So yeah, great for running this sort of thing. But there is one big problem with them, and that's the sound. Now here in Windows, that's quite an easy problem to solve. But when it comes to trying to use uh, one of these for DOS, as far as I was, I was aware, there was no solution for getting sound out of one of these uh, under DOS. Or at least, there wasn't a solution for it. So sound in these is handled by the VIA VX855 chip. Uh, they called it a media processor, but it's basically an all-in-one lump that does pretty much everything other than the CPU. So here in, the, in this case, it does the sound uh, using the VIA Vinyl HD Audio, it does video, it does access to the RAM, it looks after the I.O. ports, all that kind of stuff. Now as far as I'm aware, there are no Windows 9X series of uh, drivers for the uh, VX855 chip. You can get Windows XP drivers, which, um, you know, which is what these things originally ran, but no drivers for anything uh, previous to that. Now most of that you can get around, so here for video I'm using the um, Uni VBE mini port driver. Uh, Windows itself has enough built-in drivers for doing things like the PS2 ports and whatnot. And when it comes to the USB ports, uh, you can install the uh, Windows uh, USB supplement drivers, uh, you know, to get that working. So all well and good for everything other than the sound. So on the previous videos I've done about this, and if you want to check them out, I'll leave a link down in the description, uh, there's been lots of comments left suggesting drivers that I could try to try and get the sound working. So first up, big thank you to everybody who's left a comment there making suggestions um, for drivers. So what I've done is I've, I've got all those drivers, got different versions of them, and I've spent some time trying them all out to see if uh, we could get any of them to, on here to work. So among the different drivers that I've tried, uh, there's been the VIA Chrome IGP drivers, there's been the VIA Vinyl uh, Audio drivers, there's been drivers for the VX and VT uh, 800 and 900 series uh, chipset drivers. I've even tried some Realtek drivers that have, or, or they mention the same um, kind of ID number for the hardware in this chip. Uh, you know, those drivers say they're for that, uh, that uh, hardware uh, device ID, um, uh, you know, uh, as what's built into the VX855. In fact, those Realtek ones actually seemed the most promising because the Windows 95 version of that driver has even included references to Sound Blaster emulation under DOS. So I thought, brilliant, if these ones work, it'll sort of do your DOS and Windows at the same time, you know, kill two birds with one stone, as it were. Now sadly, the long and short of it is, none of the drivers that I have um, tried have worked. I've tried installing different versions of them, I've tried just installing the, you know, the driver packages. Um, when you start then getting complaints, it's the wrong operating system or whatever, I've tried uh, pulling the drivers out of those packages and in installing them manually. I've tried forcing the drivers on, but you just end up with reboots and errors and whatnot. You know, trust me on this, I have tried the lot and sadly, nothing's worked. Now for Windows, this, is, uh, this isn't a problem. So if I just turn this around so that you can see, um, on the back here, you can see we've got a little USB uh, sound card plugged into USB port, a uh, little green audio cable from the speakers plugged into the other end. Now I've plugged this thing in and it's just worked. And when it comes to Windows sound, this is absolutely fine. So 
It doesn't really matter whether it's, um, you know, the kids have got some music on that they're listening to or uh, they're maybe playing a game or running some sound effects in, for example, here in Torkit, which is uh, part of the Plus for Kids package, the sound in Windows works absolutely fine. Subscribe. But obviously, that's not going to be any good for DOS. I mean, DOS doesn't understand USB, let alone USB sound cards. So, yeah, it just meant that these these old sort of thin clients, great for sort of old Windows emulation, but no good for DOS, which is a shame. Or at least it was a shame. We now have a potential solution. There's been a lot of buzz these last few weeks about a program called SBEMU. And as its name implies, uh, it's a Sound Blaster emulator. It's written for DOS, and it uses the um, support of the AC97 uh, sort of uh, codec -y thing uh, found in more modern sound chipsets, as I say, to, to emulate a Sound Blaster. Now, it's made by someone called Crazy, spelt C-R-A-Z-I-I. -I. Check out their GitHub page if you want to download this to uh, have a play with it on your machine. I'm not going to go into massive detail about how to install this and get it working. It's nice and simple, and all the details are on there. Now, if you want to just sort of get into more of the uh, sort of technical workings of this, check out the thread uh, over on the Vogons forum. There's a really good discussion about it over there. I'll link to the, uh, the GitHub and the Vogons thread uh, down below in the description. So when you've um, downloaded the files off GitHub and put them on your retro machine, uh, first thing you need to do is put a single line in your config sys to load the Gemx memory manager, which you can see there. Uh, it needs that uh, memory manager to work. After that, you need to use JLO to load this uh, DLL and then run this uh, HD uh, PMI32i program with the dash R and dash X switches. I've just typed that in manually, but I'm sure you, you, know, you could automate that with a little batch file or something. And then after that, you just have to run the SBEMU program itself. And there we go. Uh, we've got a Sound Blaster Pro uh, emulated, and it tells you the uh, IRQ and the address and whatnot all down there, along with OPL3 emulation uh, and the port address for that. How cool is that? We've got the music, the sound effects, everything uh, working there perfectly in Doom. Oh, I've not got the controls set up right. Uh, never mind. Go forwards. Why aren't you going forwards? And the best thing about this, as long as it's been really easy to do, is that it it just sounds right. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's some people out there who, whose ears will be better tuned to how a Sound Blaster Pro should sound or an OPL3 should sound. But to my ears, it sounds absolutely fine. It sounds just like it should sound. I mean, like I said, how, how brilliant is that? Let's just quickly do another one. Sound effects might be a little loud in that compared to the music, so I haven't changed any of the default stuff, but yeah. Again, sounds absolutely spot on. There we go, just turning that down a little bit more because uh, I've had, it was really loud so that you guys could hear it, but I can barely hear myself think. So yeah, 
Huge thank you to Crazy for um, writing this software for the community. It's absolutely brilliant. In fact, it is a game changer for these uh, for these sorts of machines where there was just no uh, support or no chance at all that you were ever going to get sound in DOS. So now, not only do these old thin clients make really good um, machines for running Windows on, make fantastic machines for running DOS on too. And as I said, for all the reasons earlier, they're absolutely great for that. So yeah, I'm really impressed with this. Uh, so by all means, go and download it, check it out, try it on your retro systems. Uh, let me know what you think. Now, when it comes to this CX-0, there is uh, just one small fly in the, in the ointment, and it is a very small fly. Now, because this is now coming natively out of the machine, I've had to disconnect the audio cable from the speakers that went into the USB sound card and plug it straight into the, uh, into the CX-0 itself. Now, if you're going back and forth between DOS and Windows all the time, constantly unplugging and plugging the audio cable in, might get a little bit tiresome, but you can get speakers that have two inputs on that'll auto switch between, or you could just take the output from the USB sound card um, and the output from the machine and just mix them together. It'd be absolutely fine. I mean, also, maybe there are some Windows drivers out there for this that, uh, that would work that I've still not managed to find. If that was the case, even better. You could just forget about the USB sound card altogether then. So that is going to be it for this video. Um, I need to take Duke 3D and Doom off here before uh, my kid finds them. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this one. Um, if you have, uh, let us know. Usual thing, give us a thumbs up or drop a comment down below. But for now, I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.